Good day. I'm Don Boland, B-O-L-A-N-D, Executive Director, California Utility Emergency Association. We are the embedded partner for the last 60 years with the California Emergency Management Agency here in the State Operations Center in Mather, California. Actually, what started was we were notified by EEI, the Electrical Institute in Washington, D.C., which handles the major carriers for private investor owned utilities throughout the United States, that they had a mutual assistance request and has asked our association to step up and provide assistance for the power outages on the East Coast caused by Hurricane Sandy. What we did on Friday afternoon at about 2.30 was mobilize our mutual aid organization within the state of California, which encompasses almost 60 of the power companies, PG&E, Sempra, Southern Cal Edison, SMUD, and multiple others. We engaged them to see what kind of resources they could pull together, how fast they could pull them together, and how quickly we could get these resources dispatched to the East Coast to start mitigating the national disaster that we're now facing. In the process of this, we also took on the assignment of being the co-facilitator for the Western States for the Western Energy Institute and facilitating Washington, Oregon, New Mexico, Texas, Arizona, and all of those other states so that logistically we had put together strike teams and task force, mobilized these strike teams and task force, and got them on the road. Understanding that we are the third dimension away from the disaster, the impacted area was the primary, they're in the zone. Secondary became Midwest, their proximity was within ours. We're looking at 2,700 miles of travel. Logistically, it became a monumental task for the West Coast. We've sent several hundred out of PG&E, we're sending several hundred out of Southern Cal Edison, Sempra. We have amassed 17 major utilities already in California, put them on the road, and got them underway. Now, we are also, as of today, which is Thursday, loading them on Air Force aircraft at March Air Base. We have 15 aircraft down there, loading 70 more emergency equipment trucks and crews from San Diego Gas and Electric, Southern Cal Edison, to expedite getting them into Rye, New York in the area's hardest hit. This morning we started to put together our second wave of emergency response. We are now pulling more from PG&E and all the others, assembling them and sending them. Now this cannot happen without the public partnership that we are embedded in in California. California's Cal EMA organization has stood up supporting our initiative in the association and put together a task force to assist us in the travel plans. Part of the task force is CHP. They're working with the scales. Caltrans working with road access. We have DOT working with permits. And the warning center from the state of California has stood up and is tracking all of the vehicles as they cross state lines. We have put together a co-operational task force which is calling every state DOT to alert them these convoys are coming. And as such, they remove any roadblock impeding our ability to get to the disaster zone safely and expeditiously as possible. What do these convoys look like? Convoys are made up of both air assets going out, and we're running massive amounts of low boys, semi-trailers that carry multiple utility trucks on them, so that we can get that equipment to the coast. At the same time, we have chartered big aircraft, 737 800s, 737s, and a lot of commercial seats to put the crews on the aircraft, get the crews positioned out ahead of their apparatus, so as it arrives in New York and New Jersey and New England, we have the crews ready to de-embark, get in their vehicles, they're fresh, they're ready to go, they're outfitted, they can be immediately deployed, to start restoring the power infrastructure. Has anything like this ever happened before? This exceeds, I was involved in Hurricane Andrew and I've been involved in Katrina. This exceeds from a mutual aid request any size and scope that I've ever been involved with from a utility aspect. We presently have in excess of 50,000 electric linemen on the ground and we're deploying another nine to 10,000 as we speak right now. This is taking every resource the domestic United States has to address this issue. This raises the question, um, how does that leave the preparedness team in California? 
one of the things that we always take a look at is making sure that we are capable of responding to our constituents and our residents here. We will never drain our reserves to the point that we cannot cover the essentials that we need to be. And that's why this mutual assistance and this public-private partnership is so important because now we're down to minimum staffing, which we still need to maintain what we're doing for our residents, but we're still able to move crews from San Diego to San Francisco, to Los Angeles, to San Bernardino with each other if we need them. Um, so what's the headline for today? Our headline is today that we have put every resource at our fingertip and we have unilateral support and cooperation from the state and federal government as it has never been seen before.